So here we're going to look at a brief overview of cell theory and comparative cell size. The image here shows uh, scaling of all the way down to an atom in small molecules and how they rate in comparison to, say, a bacteria, um, an animal cell, or a human hair, and what lies in between those two. Over here, there's a rudimentary picture of what the first image of what cells look like. So starting first with cell structure. In 1655, the English scientist Robert Hooke coined the term cells. He used this very rudimentary microscope, and this is the image that he saw. And when he looked through there, he coined the term cells because he felt what he was looking at here looked very similar to like prison cells. And that's the term we use today. Basic structure of cells, though so all cells have this same basic structure. Now keep in mind there's animal cells, there's also plant cells, but basic structure is this flexible plasma membrane that surrounds the entire cell. And it's in both animal and also plant cells. The interior, the inside, is filled with semi-fluid material called cytoplasm. And that's true for both cell types here. Inside are specialized structures called organelles. And, these are the, and also the cell's genetic material. So we'll talk about more of this in other videos. But there's um, these organelles and eukaryotes. And they are specialized structures that occur within the cells. So cell theory, detailed study of how the cell began. Um, so 1655 was the first kind of visualization of that. There was kind of a lull there, and in the 1830s, we started to get this kind of cell theory starting to develop. And it's the unifying concept in biology. It, it originated from work from these scientists. So Robert Hooke, again, was first. Um, other biologists, um, she, she Leiden and Schwann and Vicro are three other scientists that were important to develop this cell theory. Again, this is a very early concept, trying to get an idea or a handle of what this actually, what these actually structures are. And this is kind of what they came up with. And this is kind of a summary here. The cell theory has three components. The first one is all organisms are composed of cells. And this is, um, again, 1830s, late 1830s is when this kind of first came about. Number two, all cells come from pre-existing cells. This is 1850s. So all cells come from pre-existing cells. So in order to get a cell, it had to come from another cell. You have that division process that occurs. Yes, it does bring apart the question of, well, where did the first cell come from? But in theory, the cell theory here, we're only looking at where did our cells come from? Well, they came from pre-existing cells. And the third part of the theory is cells are the small structural and functional units of organisms. They're the most simple, they're the most basic structure. Now we can have very different um, amount of cells or types of cells, uh, but they're the smallest structural functional unit of an organism. Yes, cells may have a nucleus, they may have mitochondria, they may have other components in them, but the cell itself is a small structural functional unit. They're still composed of other things, but that cell represents that very small functional unit. Organisms and cells can give me an idea of just kind of how things kind of come about. We have our um, sperm and egg here, very small, single-celled, going to our larger human fetus. We're getting our kind of pluripotent cells, our massive cells, and then those can come together to form these um, circulatory systems. This could be heart tissue, nervous systems, so on and so forth. Here's a kind of a zoomed-in picture of that original image where we have our atoms, we have our DNA bases, our proteins are getting a little bit bigger. Viruses are a little bigger than that. Genes are bigger than viruses. Bacteria are bigger than the genes. Our animal cells are bigger than that. And our human hair here would be the largest in this um, scalation here. So just give you an idea of what things look like in comparison to one another. Visualizing cells, again, they're very small. Um, our heavy atoms here are very small. Proteins are the kind of the next size up. Ribosomes, viruses, prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. There'll be separate videos in each one of these. Prokaryotic cells we could think of like bacteria. We think of them as more rudimentary, more basic cells. And then eukaryotic cells. These are the ones that contain organelles, like defined nucleuses, or if they're a plant cell chloroplast, the mitochondria present. So that's our eukaryotic cells, and they're bigger for that reason. There's this great um, link here where it's um, coffee to carbon, it says. Carbon being the carbon atom, a very simple, um, basic, small, small structure, all the way up to coffee. So if you go to this website here, we'll take a look at it. 
Nginx.utah.edu gives you this idea of a coffee bean. And we see these little tiny things here in a grain of rice. Well, down here there's a little sliding scale here. And we can start to zoom in. So we notice the coffee bean, we're zooming in. How big that coffee bean looks like to a grain of salt for comparison. A grain of salt is quite large compared to these things. Let's see if we can zoom in and see some of those. So here's our grain of salt. We're seeing these kind of amoeba start, starting to be here. So the of the amoebas are pure paramecium. These are human egg cell compared to a sperm cell. Looking at our skin cell, photoreceptors rise. These are in the back of our eyes. Are right, getting smaller here? Red blood cell. Baker's yeast. How small they are in comparison to the X chromosome. See some also small things. The mitochondria. How that looks compared to the red blood cell. Well, if we zoom in even further, E. coli, lysosomes, which we'll learn about when we do organelles. A couple other small things here, different viruses here being small, HIV, influenza. But wait, there's more. Hepatitis virus, ribosomes, antibodies, tRNA, hemoglobin. Yes, it gets even smaller. Phospholipids, glucose, adenine, should sound familiar, water molecule all the way down to a carbon atom. So this is the smallest form. I can zoom on the way back out. Kind of a cool kind of trip going from carbon atoms to the amino acids, to the glucose, to the phospholipids, to the tRNA, how big the antibody looks right now in the hemoglobin. Well, size is a relative thing. This is our ribosome. We'll learn about those when we do organelles. Viruses. Again, there's different types of viruses. Look this giant thing over here. Well, that is simply just a mitochondria. Lysome, E. coli, chromosome, baker's yeast, red blood cells, sperm cell, egg cell, skin cell, amoeba, grain of salt, all the way out to coffee bean. So this is just kind of the neat way to be able to look at and compare um, the relative size of things and how small certain things are and in, in the great scheme of things, how large some other things can be. So again, just a nice little comparison, looking to get you to appreciate the size and the reason why these cells need to be so small. You want to look at the surface area to volume video.